was not a fan of fairy tales when they were younger. I bet we all were, right? Among the favorites are Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Cinderella, and Little Red Riding Hood. As kids, we absolutely loved these stories. But now that we're older, we've come to realize that some of these stories do creep us the hell out. So, let's discover what are the 14 historic children's fairy tales that will haunt your nightmares. Hi, welcome to our channel, Eventful Insights. Today, we're counting down our list for 14 historic children's fairy tales that actually give us goosebumps. Ready to find them out? Before we begin, we'd love to know this in the comments below. What was your favorite children's fairy tale as a kid? Let's start with number 14, Rumpelstiltskin. A tricky little goblin guy offers to help a girl who's in big trouble because she has to turn straw into gold using a spinning wheel, or else the king will punish her. The deal is that she has to give up her first baby unless she can guess the goblin's name within three days. When she becomes a mom, the goblin comes back and she desperately tries to figure out his name. On the last night, she eavesdrops on him in the woods and hears him singing his own name. The next day, she says his name and he loses, and they live happily ever after. Some versions of the story get even scarier. In one version by the Brothers Grimm in 1857, the goblin gets so mad when the girl guesses his name that he stomps his foot into the ground and tears his own body in half. Wow, that was truly horrifying. Next up on our list, number 13, Max and Moritz. Max and Moritz are two mischievous boys who love playing mean tricks on their neighbors. Their pranks are quite nasty, like causing chickens to eat strings and die tangled up, removing planks from a bridge, almost killing a tailor, and adding gunpowder to their teacher's pipe, nearly blowing him away. Eventually, they go too far by slashing open sacks of a farmer's corn. As a consequence, they get stuffed into the sacks, taken to the mill, and ground to pieces. Their remains are fed to the local ducks, and surprisingly, no one seems to miss them. Strangely, the farmer seems to enjoy grinding them up, and the whole town is strangely okay with it. Even more bizarre, the illustrations show the ducks eating grain shaped like little boys after they've been ground up. Down at number 12, we have the Tooth Fairy. The Tooth Fairy is this small, slender girl who works really hard all year round, even more than the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. She adores collecting teeth and has tons of them neatly sorted into boxes based on gender, location in the mouth, extras, and more. She uses teeth to decorate her place, from fish bowls to kitchen shelves, and even the path to her house is covered in teeth. She's so into teeth that she throws a yearly party for all the fairies, where they exchange teeth as gifts and play games with them. The creepy part is she loves teeth because she doesn't have any of her own. Then we have at number 11, the girl who stepped on the bread. Hans Christian Andersen often wrote about naughty girls facing consequences. In this story, a conceited girl, raised in better circumstances, drops a loaf of bread in the mud during a visit to her poor mother. Stuck to the loaf, she sinks into hell, enduring torments while hearing her mother's tears. Eventually, she transforms into a bird, spending a winter collecting crumbs to equal the weight of the loaf and then flies away, possibly to heaven. Next, at number 10, we have Ozma of Oz. In this follow-up to The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy helps put the rightful ruler back in charge of Ev with the help of Oz's peculiar characters. It's pretty eerie for many reasons, like Princess Langweeder and her collection of heads, the Gnome King turning people into decorations, and the creepy wheelers. The story reflects the moral values of the early 1900s, which is interesting to compare as an adult and parent today. For number nine, we have Little Orphan Annie. It's a poem about an orphan girl brought into a 19th century household to do all the housework. After dinner, she scares the kids with creepy stories about goblins punishing naughty behavior. The first story is about a boy who, for not saying his prayers, gets taken by goblins in the night, leaving only his pajama bottoms behind. Reading about a boy being taken away, half naked, can be disturbing today. And at number eight, we have Rubber Bum. A young boy is sent to the market to buy bacon, but instead of buying it, he cuts off a piece of his own buttocks and sells it. His mom keeps praising how tasty it is. This bizarre routine continues until he runs out of buttocks. Shocked, his parents get him a rubber fake one. One day, he falls down, bounces, and disappears, never to be seen again. Those were truly hair-raising and creepy stories. But we're not done yet. 
Well, which fairy tales were you familiar with upon hearing the stories? Tell us in the comments below. If you're interested in knowing more about the disturbing truths behind children's fairy tales like Cinderella and Snow White, you can watch the videos we made about them. Now let's continue with number seven, the red shoes. A bratty girl receives a fancy pair of red shoes that she refuses to take off. A man curses the shoes, making her unable to remove them, and they force her to dance nonstop. Eventually, she dances herself to death. Today, when this story is read, readers may get goosebumps by hearing she danced herself to death. At number six, we have the bunyip. The bunyip is a creepy creature in the Australian outback with a long body, an ugly head, and scary claws on its feet and hands. It hangs out in billabongs, ditches, and marshy bogs. Its survival strategy is catching and eating kids, especially those who are a bit naughty, while they're out camping. The bunyip roams around targeting these mischievous children who mysteriously vanish and are never seen again. And for number five, we have the teeny tiny woman. The teeny tiny woman is like an old English ghost story where a small lady finds a bone in a graveyard during her walk and decides to bring it home for dinner. When she takes a nap, a ghost shows up asking for the bone, and she casually says, take it. The weird part is that eating the bone seems normal, while the ghost wanting it back is meant to be the scary part, making it kind of creepy. For number four, we have the duchess that baked a cake. The duchess, who is the main character, decides to take a break from her duchess duties and bake a cake. However, things go wrong when the batter starts rising uncontrollably like bread dough. The duchess tries to stop it by climbing onto the rising cake, but it keeps going and traps her high up on a tower made of cake. Her husband and kids worry she's stuck there forever. To solve the problem, the duchess comes up with a plan. Everyone should eat the cake so she can safely get down. What's worse? When the youngest child starts crying, the Duke coldly says, don't cry, dear, about your poor mother. I'm sure if you want, I can find you another. This complete lack of care and the readiness to replace his wife can be really shocking to many people today. We're now down to the last three children's fairy tales on our list. At number three, we have The Tale of Samuel Whiskers. The Tale of Samuel Whiskers is a kid's book by Beatrix Potter from 1908 and it follows the story of Tom Kitten, who lives in a house with rats. Instead of staying in a cupboard while his mother bakes, Tom hides in the chimney, ends up in the attic, and gets caught by Mr. Samuel Whiskers and his wife Anna Maria. The rats plan to make a pudding out of Tom, so they fetch ingredients like butter and dough. When they return, they cover Tom in butter, roll him in dough, creating what could be considered the world's first perito. Down at number two, we have The Strange Feast. In this story, a regular sausage makes friends with a blood sausage. The blood sausage invites the regular sausage over and steps out. While alone, the regular sausage witnesses strange things like a broom and dustpan arguing and a babbling monkey. Something signals danger, so the sausage runs outside. When looking back through the window, the regular sausage sees the blood sausage holding a sharp knife, saying, If I hadn't warned you, I'd have had you. It's already creepy having a children's story about a serial killer, but making a blood sausage into a character just adds an unsettling touch. And lastly, at number one, we have Hansel and Gretel. To be honest, there are several kids' stories, including Little Red Riding Hood, that still disturb many adults today. However, Hansel and Gretel seems to be particularly unsettling for many. It's a tale about two kids who get lost in a forest, find a candy house, and then have to deal with a hostage situation ultimately defending themselves by killing someone. It's a story involving luring, kidnapping, and murder with children as the central characters. The fear of kids getting lost is bad enough, but being held captive with the intention of being eaten, hinting at cannibalism, and then having a child make a decision like, it's us or her, it just seems to be a pure loss of innocence. Well, that's it. Can you believe we tackled 14 children's fairy tales in just a quick time? Which fairy tale left you feeling haunted the most? Tell us in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, please support us by giving us a like, click the subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell to get notified on our next video. Thanks for watching.